and I was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, get the net, George. <laughs> I've known Casey for three years from covering the FLW Tour, and it didn't take me long to realize Casey's a different kind of fisherman, especially for a co-angler. He would practice very hard, very diligently, very thoroughly at every event, and towards the end of the year you'd always see that, not necessarily in each tournament, but by the end of the year in the standings, Casey Martin's name would always be near the top. And that, that kind of dedication is actually somewhat rare on the co-angler side. So it doesn't surprise me whatsoever to see him making that gradual ascension to the pro level. Sponsors don't want to back a first year pro necessarily. They want to see results from a pro first before they invest their dollars and the integrity of their brands behind a fisherman's name. So for Casey, year one is, is by and large coming out of his own pocket. This tournament was 4000 so you know $1,000, you have to put in your $6,000 deposit at the beginning of the year to, to get your spot and then it's 3000 extra per tournament. You got a shot, a one in three shot pretty much at making 10000 you know, so that'll pay for a couple months of, you know, being on the road and stuff like that. But it's no, you know, there's no guaranteed paycheck. It's almost like gambling. It's almost like being a, a professional poker player sometimes, you know, they, these guys that come into Vegas and they, you know, they put their money up. Some guys walk away with money, some guys walk away with, you know, their tail between their legs and, you know, hopefully you just got enough to get through the year and make it to the next event. In the past couple years, Casey's had several high finishes. He's won three events from the back of the boat, including Gunnersville and Lake Champlain. So in those past couple years, he's kind of socked away some money, somewhat of a financial cushion. That makes now the perfect time to transition from co-angler to pro. I won the co-angler event at Kentucky, and I, I told myself I won, I won two in 2011 as a co-angler, and I told myself in 2012 if I win one more that I was going to try it as a professional. And lo and behold, the, the winnings from Kentucky Lake was 25000 and it cost 24000 in entries. You know, if I don't cash checks, it's going you know, to be, uh, be tough financially. For those who have never been to Okeechobee, it's truly a, it's a different animal. The lake itself is massive. It's over 400,000 acres. And most of that's only four or five feet deep. It's essentially a massive swamp. And at first, it's overwhelming if you've never been there because everything looks good. After a while, you kind of learn there's certain pieces of cover, whether it's mats or reeds or clear water where the bass are spawning, that are really productive. So far, Casey's practice has it's been bad. And those, those eight and nine pounders, those big bites, they've been scarce. The thing is, I just, it was a tough practice. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of fish biting. And if I did get, you know, I shook a not a bunch off, but I didn't, I didn't set the hook on all of them to see how big they were. Because uh, I, li I like to, you know, shake a few off. So if I go back through an area, those fish are more catchable or more, you know, apt to bite again. And for me, it's hard for me to tell with shaking them off if they're big or little. But there was a big cold front that came through and, you know, it killed the bite for everybody. And everybody that was walking around saying, you know, I can hardly catch anything. And I think that's true. I just think it's, it's tough right now. And that's kind of why, you know, I'm not as optimistic as I could be. It's just because the bite's tough. And it's going to come down to you get a couple big bites and you land them, you're going to have a good tournament. And if you don't get the big bites and you don't land them, you know, it's going to be one of those deals that you could be in 112th place, you know. Casey's been a good co-angler now for three years. He's made all the right moves, all the right steps. The transition is there from co-angler to first-year pro. But at the same time, this is the FLW Tour. It's not charity. This is the best of the best. And competing at that level in your very first tournament, it's a giant question mark. I'm not greatly confident about this tournament. You know, if I get a check, I'd be pretty happy. But, uh, you know, I, I like to fish for, you know, top 10. So I'm just going to go out there and fish to to try to give myself a shot at winning at least, you know. I just really don't want to bomb in my first event as a professional. It's kind of like everybody's watching you, you know, you step up from the co-angler side and it's kind of like, you know, hopefully your first event you do well and then you can carry a little bit of that momentum into the other ones. If you do bad in your first one, everybody's like, well, maybe he was just a, you know, just a good co-angler. And it's a lot of pressure, but you know, I'm, I'm up to the challenge, hopefully. That is a huge Okeechobee largemouth right there. Day one in Okeechobee, the weather was, was really good. The fishing was better than expected. We had some warm sunshine. 
and the big girls started biting. We had several sacks over 20 pounds. Well, sometimes they look smaller here, sometimes they look bigger. I think they look bigger. Everyone I've weighed so far weighs smaller. Really? The biggest fish, Dion Hibden, cut a nine pound, 10 ouncer, and leading the tournament was Rick Cotton with 24 pounds. Awesome day out there today. I just uh, I pulled up to my first area where I had a, a good one in practice. Uh, I was I was making a pitch to the first area and I felt a little thump and I was, I was like, all right, a fish already. Set the hook and then all of a sudden this six and a half pounder comes out and my colleague was trying to get the net off the seat still and it, it was just pure chaos to start the day. I like bagging these fish. <laughs> You know, I, it was a five pounder every time he swung the rod. It was a pretty cool deal catching, you know, a six and a half pounder on my first cast as a professional in the AFLW2. He had 15 pounds of boat before I could turn around. Hey, I did okay. Hey, what's yeah. this? I hear you're running some smack about me. <laughs> I don't want to run no smack, you know. I don't but, know what to think. I mean, the leader of the tournament calling me out, you know, <laughs> saying the honey badgers, and, you know, I don't know, feeding on mice instead of <laughs> set of cobras. I had a few cobras today, but I'm coming for you. Oh, come on now. <laughs> no, take it easy, Ali. No. You, heck no, you I'm want not enough, taking it easy. You want enough money out this here. This is you know? my lake. You know, I'll keep texting you during the affluence. Let's go fishing, Randy. Out on, <laughs> and I keep getting a text back. Who is this? Who is this? You know? Right, we'll see. Good luck tomorrow, man. So. Our tournament leader coming in today, Casey Martin, Ranger Pro from Newmarket, Alabama, 26 12 coming in the day two. You need 11 pounds, 7 ounces to take the lead back. He does have five today. Today's weight. I just got back from the uh, lie detector. First one I had to take with FLW. Uh, it was a little nerve wracking, but. We usually give three to five polygraphs uh, per event. Uh, typically, I'll, I'll, I'll pick out the people that are in the lead, either the first place, third place, maybe the eighth place guy. And then, you know, uh, there's a lot of money in this sport, and we want to keep the integrity where it needs to be, and just to keep a good, honest person honest, you know? You know, I passed with flying colors, so it was a cool deal, you know, uh, hopefully I uh, have to do quite a bit more because, you know, every time you do a lie detector, it's because you've been doing well in the tournament, so. 12 in the day two, you need 11 pounds, 7 ounces to take the lead back. You just have five today. Today's weight. 18 pounds, 9 ounces, super early, 45, 5, 5. Give a big one Great job today, sir. Casey ends day two in second place with just over 45 pounds. Uh, the wind picked up days three and four, and that kind of changed his whole area, and the bite got real bad, real tough. I just passed Brent Ayler. I got Chad Grigsby behind me. It's 
you know, it's amazing. I've watched these guys my whole life, and I can't believe I'm idling out with them here right now. The first two days, it didn't take a whole lot. You know, I had a limit by 9.30 both days. Today, I don't think I had a fish at 9.30 in the morning. Coming, swinging them, swinging them, swinging them. Oh, finally. Oh, he's big with. He's number one. That thing keeps going. I was afraid, because on these cut days, they still make you go across the stage even if you don't have a fish. So I was like, I was kind of worried, like, you know, I, I didn't want to go up there without, you know, any fish. It'd be kind of embarrassing, I think, you know. Casey Martin, here's the deal. Right now, you're in the top 10 cut. <laughs> you're sitting in, a, in 10th place, eight pounds, four ounces. Casey, that moves you to fifth place with 53 pounds, nine ounces. You're in striking distance for now. If I win here, then you'll win Smith. Heading out in second place in the Walmart, Evan Rubel from Bentonville, Alabama, three days. Ranger Pro, Michael Neal. Hey, Thrift, your back compartment's open, or it's not all the way shut at least. Heading out in sixth place in the Everstar Family Boat. You're ready to go. Bernie Ayler caught him really well and Drew Benton ended up being our champion at Okeechobee. He had a nice little double pattern going. I still ended up in sixth place. You know, it was my first uh, FLW Tour event, and you know, I cashed a pretty good check, and that'll you know keep me going to the uh, to the next event. I mean, the hundred thousand would have been great, but you know, to win seventeen thousand working for a week, it, you know, it's good money, and uh, you know, I'll just look forward to hopefully making a lot more. That'd be that'd be great. <laughs> For Casey, uh, a top 10 finish and taking sixth in your very first tournament, that's quite the accomplishment. I'm going to head back on the road to uh, Alabama on, uh, on Tuesday. Got Valentine's Day coming up, so I'll probably spend some time, try to spend some time with, with Lindsay, my girlfriend, and then uh, Smith Lake goes off limits Sunday, so I have to uh, get a little pre-practice in there for the next FLW Tour event. Just try and keep fishing and try to improve on every tournament. Casey has all the momentum he needs now for the rest of the season.